Welcome to Business Talk Sister Beck. I'm Becca. And I'm Ruthie. And today we are going to get you awake and alive because <laughs> we are going to be talking about business taxes. Ooh, look at that spicy content. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> One of our most recent episodes we were recording, uh, all of a sudden we just turned into like these weird jazz <laughs> chill voices like, we're going to put you to sleep. <laughs> and we're like, well, we're going to try to make up for that in this episode. But the reality is that we're talking about taxes. <laughs> so here we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, what form should I have for as, as a small business to do my taxes? Yeah. So it depends on what your business model is um, and if you are a sole proprietorship or not. And Becca's going to tell us about that. Okay. So the very first thing that I hear a lot from people is, oh, I don't want to start a business because I don't know how to do taxes. But the good news is you don't have to pay any taxes if you don't make any money. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So it's really not scary because... You're only putting aside a portion of what you made to pay for the income that you've generated, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're going to have to pay anything when you didn't make any money. So you'll always have the money to pay your taxes if you make sure to save it. So Mm -hmm. within that, what does that look like? So if you are a sole proprietor, so say people, you're just working and people are paying you for doing something. You haven't set up a business, whatever. Maybe you're just like a subcontractor for somebody If you make more than $600 in one year from one person that is paying you, you need to report that on your income taxes. Hmm. Surprise, right? And so within that, if you're making more than $600, you should make sure that you are giving that person, especially if they're business, um, you should be reporting it if they're just a person, like an individual, say you're doing a bunch of yard work or whatever. Um, but if, you, if you're doing it for a business, you should make sure to give them something called a W-9. Hmm. So a W-9 is this lovely form. You can search it on the internet. Uh, we will actually link to it in the blog post as well. But it's on the federal IRS website that has information basically about your name, your address, And it'll ask you either for your social security number or your EIN. So your EIN is a number that you get if you file a legal business name. And that will basically be within your business structure. So if you're not a sole proprietor, you would have like an EIN number when you register your business or your company with the, the government. So and within that, we should talk a little bit about the difference between there's federal registration with the government for your business and then there's also um, the state. So that's like your name and stuff, you register with the state, but then you also get a federal number through that process. And let me tell you, if you ever have questions, just call the IRS. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, no, seriously. (laughs) You can call or the Secretary of State and say, hey, I'm filing this. What what does that look like? And they'll try to point you to different places on the website. There's tons of information there already. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about when you let's say you make over six hundred dollars. What does that look like? You've you've maybe submitted your W nine to the business that you've been working for as a subcontractor or as an overall like just providing a service or a product. Okay, so how do you report that at the end of the year? you use a form that they give you called a 1099. Hmm. So they're going to start doing their taxes and they say, here you go, here's a form that you use to report your income. If they don't give you that form, you should still report it anyway. <laughs> you just won't have the numbers on there of like, hey, this is where this, this income came from. Hmm. Keeping track of your income is something you can do with accounting software dun, dun, dun. <laughs> i don't even need like little soundtrack things <laughs> because really just make them up on the spot i, I come with them built in it's yeah. my speciality <laughs> yeah you know you know how like some radio shows they always have like all of these little like sound effects like buttons boing, like, <laughs> buttons that they push i do that in regular life i just make my own sound effects on accident and it's, they just come out they're involuntary <laughs> <laughs> involuntary free sound effects <laughs> okay so uh we're were we with okay so like when you report stuff using your accounting system so let's go back a little bit to talk about should i be filing my taxes quarterly or 
annually. Mm. Big question. So technically, you should be filing them quarterly. But if you're not making more than, I think the threshold, which you'll have to look up, it's somewhere between like fifteen to 20000 or whatever. I think it's important to note at this point that neither of us are experts on this. We just have varying levels of experience. Becca has more experience with business taxes than I do. I have more experience with like um, people's for personal finance on a day-to-day basis. And Becca has more experience with personal finances as well as business finances. But you really should do a lot of research on your own and not just take everything that we say for granted, which you should do that anyway. But like, <laughs> just just take everything we say with a grain of salt, even though we have done a lot of research and we have a decent amount of experience with it. Okay. Hashtag don't sue us. <laughs> We're not certified public accountants. <laughs> We just know stuff that we Google on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. No, actually. And we've had lots of conversations or done it for personal business use or whatever. So, Mm -hmm. okay. Anyways, uh, the threshold, okay. I said 10 to 15. It probably is 150. I actually don't know. So you should probably look that up. But Mm -hmm. you can file annually if it's a sole proprietor because you're doing it on your like regular income tax. Like it's because it's straight through. The money's going straight through to you not as a business path through. So it's not going to your business and then to your personal bank account. Mm-hmm. Um, but regardless of if it's a business or not, that is like a legitimate filed structure, you should have a separate bank account for your business so that you can track your costs of goods sold better. Because when you track your costs of goods sold and your mileage that you have for going to, to different places for your business or whatever, those are called tax write-offs. Ta-da! <laughs> I was going to say dan dan again, and then I thought I should switch it up. Ta-da. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, your job is to think about your next sound effect and okay. be unique before the next one. Okay. All right. Okay, so tax write-offs. <laughs> those are super important to think about because when you run a business, there's lots of things you can write off for different things. So, like, if you purchase equipment... That's a tax write-off. You can report and say, yep, I actually took money from the money that I made and I used it to buy new things. So Mm -hmm. in the end, when you look at your financial statements, which in the future we'll be talking about how to read financial statements and and all that kind of fun stuff, um, that is your net. So at the top is your gross income if you're reading a financial statement and then below that it's like here's all the things that it costs me to run my business and then below that after all of the expenses and everything you will see the net income so what did you actually make after you paid for your gas after you had to buy equipment all that kind of stuff right so when you do a whole lot of like driving and all that kind of stuff those things can be tax write-offs but you need to track them so when you track them, you can either use a spreadsheet, you can use a notebook in your car, or you can check out, um, I really like the app um, for QuickBooks Self-Employed. It actually has a little like tracking of your location to uh, report, this is a trip I made for work. Mm-hmm. And that actually syncs really nicely with TurboTax and all that, but I am personally not a fan of paying money for things, so I just do it on my own. <laughs> you can also, if you are looking at um, like past and you're like, man, I really should have been keeping track of this. If you are as immersed in Google as I unfortunately am, <laughs> um, you can actually look at like your trips and stuff on Google Maps and it can show you like, I think it goes back. I don't even know how long, maybe indefinitely. I That's the lie. You would not have it indefinitely. But like it goes back a decent amount of time and you can actually look at the different trips and it'll show you like on this day, you went from this place to this place and then from this address to this address. And like, and then you can calculate the mileage that way if you have to go back. Yeah. And that's and a that's lot of work. Also, if you have your location tracking on at all times. Which I do because I, I actually think it's really fun. <laughs> I think it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but. So keep that Personal in mind. Personal preference. What are you giving up? <laughs> what are you giving up in terms of privacy? <laughs> if you keep it in a notebook in your car, nobody knows where you've been. <laughs> yeah. And nobody's, oh, hopefully Google is not tracking that. <laughs> <laughs> because that would be weird if they did. <laughs> okay. So um, the next question we have in that is how does it, how long does it take to do my taxes for a small business? Mm. 
Are you asking me that question? Yeah. How long <laughs> does it take to file your business? Taxes? Okay, so it really depends on your business structure. There's like so many different business structures. So like if you are doing it under your pass through sole proprietor or partnership, which is pretty similar to sole proprietor, except for you're doing it with somebody else and you're just passing that money straight through to you guys. Um, there's there's lots of things about business structure we could talk about here, but um, if it's like a S corp or corporation, you have like shares in the company and you're reporting those a little bit differently. Um, but within that, if you use a tax software or if you're working with an accountant, they're gonna walk you through those categories. Um, how long does it take? It really is dependent on if all of your stuff is together. Are you organized? Because mm -hmm. if you have all of your receipts, which by the way, I love receipts by wave because it's an app on your phone. You take a picture, it logs it in your accounting system. You can do your reconciliation later, whatever. Um, then you don't have to save all the paper copies. But mm -hmm. if you like saving paper copies and you really like having extra security, um, you have all those in a file and you add those up and say, yep, this is how much I spent on the business this year. I would organize them by year. So if you, if we talk about fiscal year, it's a big word, but um, different companies have different filing fiscal years. So some companies, like big corporate companies, it's weird, but they have their filing in August, whereas like everyone else files at the beginning of the year for the previous year. And they, um, those taxes, like for personal taxes are due by like April, April 15th. 15th. Yeah. Yeah. So. If you're doing it with your personal taxes at the same time, you can do it on the regular cycle, which is January 1st to December 31st. So in terms of how long, I would say if you really didn't do a whole lot of business that year and there were single invoices for a few projects, it's probably gonna take you between two to four hours if you do it yourself. Or if you're working with an accountant, you bring it all in, just give it to them, and then they do it for you, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you have a lot of individual sales for a lot of different small products, you're going to have to track all of that. So make sure you have like a really great process for doing that. If you're keeping on top of your accounting for the whole year, it really shouldn't take you that much longer because you'll be able to pull all that data pretty quickly. Um, so it's good to know what's available with that. And then... Ruthie made a good point earlier about something from a previous episode that we had done. Yeah. So in our, our I think it was either a billboard episode or um, the storage, the storage unit with Tim Van Seuss. He talked about how when you keep really good books uh, and you are consistent with your taxes and really good at reporting things on that, you your business actually has a better resale value. Um, so keep that in mind too, that it is worth it to take the extra time to really be thorough about the record keeping that you are doing for your business. And just so we're clear on this, there's some people that, because when Tim talked about that, he was talking about people that like find ways to cheat make, the system. <laughs> yeah, cheat the system. Or like, it's not necessarily cheating, but like writing off more things mm -hmm. within their taxes so it looks like they made less money overall. Mm -hmm. um, but like sometimes it's like you double up on, okay, so I did, I went to Walmart and bought this, but for my business, but I also bought groceries at the same time, tax write off for that trip because I bought this. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you double those things up, you put a whole bunch of more miles on, you're saying, yep, I spent all this for business, which sometimes is legitimate. Sometimes it's like a gray area, mm -hmm. but within that, again, we're not CPAs, <laughs> don't sue us, <laughs> but within that thinking about how that could make you look like your bottom line is not what it is. So is that really truthful, right? Mm -hmm. And is that really as valuable in the end if you're going to try to sell your company? So keep that in mind. How are you, what is your policy and what, how are you reporting your taxes, honestly? Yeah. What is the difference between reporting taxes for services versus reporting taxes for a product that you've been selling on like a major commerce website or something? So, okay. That's two questions. We're going to back up. There's a big difference between a product that you sell yourself and a product that you sell on a major e-commerce website. So mm -hmm. those are two different things. So, but service, a service is something you are providing with yourself. So like manual labor, maybe it's your expertise and your consulting. Uh, maybe it is doing stuff like teaching a skill, helping someone figure out their Facebook page, whatever. That's a service. It becomes a product as soon as you hand over something tangible. Mm. So if you're a consultant mm -hmm. and you have digital files that you're emailing, 
and again, I've looked into this quite a bit because of all the things that I've done with myself. Um, that's not considered a, a physical product. But if you give someone a flash drive, suddenly it's a physical product and you have to charge sales tax. Hmm. When it's a physical product, there is a whole little website within the Secretary of State that you report sales and use tax. Now, the use tax part is a new category for me that I was like, hmm, I don't know anything about. So I started looking into it. Use tax is when you buy something and they didn't charge you sales tax for mm. your business. You buy it and for some reason they just didn't charge you sales tax. You have to report that and then pay the tax to the government. So when you sell something, depending on the specific tax codes in your area, and again, this is very, um, very specific to where you live, by your state, by your county, by your city. Because when, even in like my town, for example, because they wanted to pay for a new hockey arena, um, they implemented a 1% sales tax increase. Mm -hmm. So that means that on top of everything, if I were to sell physical products, from my business, I would need to also charge a 1% sales tax on top of everything else mm -hmm. to the consumer. Now, you report sales and use tax quarterly. And usually they'll send you an email, but I would just put it on your calendar to make sure that you're going in and doing that. So mm -hmm. looking at your gross, how much you sold, and then how much uh, sales tax you charge or should be, have been charging, and then you pay in right there. Um, you can pay in on the on the website. Hmm. So tell us the difference between sales tax and income tax. Okay, so sales tax, you are pay your customer is paying tax on a physical product. Hmm. Income tax is you paying taxes on income that you have generated from yourself or your business. Hmm. And so those are two different categories. People who um, make a ton of money should be setting aside money or if you if you make money in general you should set aside money to pay your taxes mm -hmm. and quite honestly set aside money to pay for your retirement but <laughs> that is a whole other category <laughs> <laughs> so within that yeah um you should know that by the amount of income you generate within your business or just in general um there are different tax brackets right and so as a business if you make x amount you fall into this tax category and you have to pay like I think the lowest category on the federal level is like 15 percent whereas that if you make more then that tax bracket moves up so for some people it's really important to realize that they can actually plateau or um, move backwards so if they move from let's say you made a hundred and forty nine thousand forty nine thousand dollars but then the next year you make $151,000. And, and this is just totally hypothetical because I don't actually know the tax brackets off the top of my head right now because they change. Um, so within that, if you go from one tax bracket where it's, say you're paying 20% on your income from your business, and then you are now in a new tax bracket and you jump up and you made $151,000, but now you have to pay 35%. That is a big financial difference. Even though you only made $2,000 more, now you have to pay overall way more money. Mm -hmm. When that happens, some people realize, well, you know, actually, it's really not that worth that much to me to make $2,000 more every year. I'm going to stay within my tax bracket and not make my business grow anymore, which can be a smart move for some people that are really happy with where they're at and they don't want the extra work. But if you're thinking, I want to grow my business, I'm going to keep scaling, you need to factor that in every time you plateau because actually you're going to dip down and end up paying more to the government right when you pop to the next threshold income tax. Mm. So we're going to have more than one episode on this because we could talk all day about taxes. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to go into our gawk portion. Mm. And let me just tell you, the next episode going to be just as exciting mm. if you are as nerdy as I am. <laughs> Okay, so Ruthie, um, she's going to tell us a little bit about this <laughs> because I was not there, but I heard all about it afterwards. <laughs> okay, so one time I was trying to be very helpful um, and it ended up uh, that we almost died. So <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, that's just my preface for this story. Uh, we had the Suburban that had windows that were um, temperamental, to um, put it lightly. And one time we were driving, and my mom, we also didn't have uh, like power adjustable windows or whatever. You had to adjust them by hand. So my mom had put down the window to adjust these mirrors, and... As she did that, there was like this freak rain cloud that just came and was just torrential rain all of a sudden out of nowhere. And Micah was in the back seat, like behind my mom in his car seat. Who's and, our brother? Yeah, sorry. Uh, preface, youngest of our seven siblings, or not seven siblings, seven children. And um, she's like getting pelted with rain. And the whole time he's sitting there like, mom. Mom, you can put the window up now. <laughs> like you can, and she's like, "My God, I'm I'm trying." Like, thank you, I'm trying to. And um, as so, anyways, this window is stuck and not going anywhere, and it like starts barely going up, and then it like went back down again, and it starts hailing. So my mom is getting pelted with with rain and everything, and I was like, in my mind, I was like, her shirt's getting wet. If this blanket was covering her shirt, her shirt wouldn't be getting wet. <laughs> and I was like, I love this thought process. We were just talking about this. I was like, oh, you must have been so young. She's like, no, I was 16. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm just going to put this blanket on her shoulder. But to do that, I had to throw the blanket across her body which it got stuck on on her head. And so I literally, we're driving down the freeway and like just, I threw a blanket over my mom's head and she's like, oh, she's what? Driving. What is going on? And, like, and she just screamed. And I was like, oh my word, what have I done? And then, so then she just slowly like pulled over to the side of the road, whips this blanket off of her head and looks at me and was like, why did you think that was a good idea? And I was like, I don't know. I, I just don't know. And yeah, so that was um, extreme. In hindsight, nev- I would never have done that again. That was a um, big mistake on my also, part. Also, we do not recommend that. Yeah. Just <laughs> like we're not CPAs. We are not certified Driver. safety drivers. <laughs> <Yeah. people. laughs> <laughs> I don't even know the words of that. <laughs> Basically, hey, yeah. if you're going to take any advice from this episode, it should be never throw a blanket At over anyone's head. Risk. No, just don't do it. Don't even take the risk. <laughs> I meant the tax advice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week. Our episode is sponsored by our intern, Darby. She's the best. If you like this episode, please share it with a friend because that's how podcasts grow.